Hello everyone, this is Christopher O'Hara and this is the first video in a series that's all about beginning guitar and my goal is to kind of get you the basics and get you understanding some of the mechanics and some of the technique that you'll need to really kind of take you, your guitar playing in at a whole new level. So if you've never played guitar before and know nothing about it and want to get started, this is the perfect video to start with. So let me give you some more information. Um, you can go to my website at www.christopher-ohara.com and I have some downloads and I have uh, music lessons videos up there. And I also want to point out that I teach private lessons here in San Jose, California, but I also teach private lessons over the internet via Skype, and which is a great medium to take lessons in the comfort of your own home. And if you're, even if you're not looking to take weekly lessons and just we need to uh, check to make sure that you're doing some things right, we can set up a lesson, a couple lessons here and there, and um, I can see how you're doing and give you some feedback and give you some things to, to work on. So definitely check out my website for more information on that, as well as other things that are happening. So let's get started. Let's start with the very basics. So materials, what do you need? I think the first thing goes without saying, which is you'll need a electric or acoustic guitar. And I hear a lot that people say, well, I need to start on acoustic guitar. And I don't think that's necessarily true. I think you can start on whatever type of guitar that you're interested in. So if you're interested in rock music, I would highly recommend just get electric guitar. You can rent one relatively cheap. Um, but there's this myth about having to start with acoustic guitar, and I just don't think that you need to do that. I've taught uh, students on both instruments from the very uh, beginning um, stages all the way to advanced. So it's really, it's kind of up to you as the student. And within the acoustic guitar area, there's two types of acoustic guitars. There's the steel string and the nylon. And nylon string is mostly... Um, we see that as a, like of a classical instrument and even Brazilian and uh, that type of that that type of style where the electric guitar I think is obvious that we hear a lot in rock music and um, popular music so the steel string is kind of goes all over the map you hear it in pop you hear it in um, rock to uh, folk music to country it's it's all over the map which is it's nice to have one um, but like I mentioned before if you're really into like rock music uh, don't be afraid to start on an electric guitar you can get um, you can do a lot with that instrument all right the next thing that's real important is the uh, getting an electric tuner and I think that uh, getting a tuner is really important, and the one I recommend is a Snark tuner. And the reason why I like this one is because it uh, you can use it on both electric or acoustic guitars, and it just clamps onto the end of your headstock, looks like this, and you can just turn it on and tune each string separately. It works really great. The reason why I like this one is because the top of it rotates so you can see the display a little bit easier depending on where you clamp it on the end of your guitar. They're roughly about I, I think around twenty to thirty dollars price range um, give or take um, you know five ten dollars but I highly recommend getting one because when you're starting out you need to make sure your guitar is in perfect tuning even regardless of how good you get you always want to be in good tuning when you play or practice the instrument and this is going to allow you to do that even if you have good ears, this is a good way to kind of check to make sure that everything is in tune, all right? So next up is a pick, and I'm going to cover some finger style guitar in later lessons, but I recommend getting comfortable with using a pick, especially if you're into more of the popular and rock style of guitar playing. Um, this The pick will be very useful in those styles. The one I recommend starting out with is a Fender Medium pick, and you can see that on the display. And that's like kind of the standard shape. And most music stores have this, so you shouldn't have any problem finding it. And uh, there are a lot of uh, different types of picks out there, from the material to the shape. And uh, I, you can definitely experiment with that. But I recommend starting with something like this. And then you can, as you progress, you can try different ones out. Next up is a guitar whiner. Now, this is not like you don't have to have one of these. It's just kind of one of these nice-to-have 
items. And the reason why I like it is because it allows you to change a string or strings much quicker than just doing it by hand. It basically clamps onto your tuning peg and you can just crank on that, that tuning peg and get multiple wraps of the string around the, the tuning peg. And that's important because that'll help the string from keeping from slipping at the end, as well as just keeping it in tune better. So um, getting one of these, they're only a few bucks, so I recommend getting at least one of them. I have several of them that I just kind of throw in my guitar cases for all my different guitars, so I always have one with me. The next thing that's nice to have is a guitar strap, and even if I'm practicing sitting down, I like to have the strap on because it helps support the guitar a little bit better and allows me to get the guitar, at least the neck of the guitar, into a position where I can see it better. So I end up not having to hunch over my guitar as much, and it just feels more comfortable when I'm practicing sitting down. The next thing that's nice to have is a music stand. And what I like to do is I have a music stand um, at home, and I can put all the music that I'm working on for the week right on that stand, and I just leave it there. So if I have a few minutes to practice, the music's right there. I don't have to go search for it. It's very useful to, to, to allow you to grab those few minutes of practicing time, especially during a busy day. The next thing that I think is important is to have a guitar stand with your guitar out and about. Now, some of us don't have that luxury. Maybe you have kids, maybe you have animals that potentially can knock the instrument. So uh, what you can try is a wall, ma wall mount um, guitar stand. So if you look in the back there, you can see my guitar is hanging on the wall and that's used uh, that's done by one of these wall mounts what I like is these ones that actually clamp down the neck of the guitar when you set it on the stand and there's a company called Hercules that makes those I'm sure there's a few other manufacturers that make similar ones the Hercules one seems to work really good and I've never had my guitar fall over with one of their stands so I really recommend their products the next thing is to have a three ring binder so you can put all your material in and I generally recommend to my students to put even dividers in there for different subjects. For instance, you may have a section for songs, a section for chords, a section for rhythm, a section for theory and uh, that just again allows you to do basic organiza organization of your material because we're all pretty busy and the better we're organized the more effective our practicing time is going to be. Some people use uh, iPads to store all their music, which is a good good way to do that. The only downside to that is that it's difficult, if impossible, to actually make accurate notes within the music. And there may be a application that helps you do that, and I haven't found one. So if you know any thoughts on that, send me an email. Um, but I, I, I like to print things out for that reason, which is to take notes on the paper, whether it's I'm doing it for my students or even for myself. It's really important to be able to do that. It also allows you to document things. So if you're practicing something and you have a specific tempo you're trying to work towards, you can document this different stages of tempos that you're, that you're working on to measure your progress to the point of where you can actually play it at that designated tempo. The next thing that's nice to have is strings, and at least to get some extra set of strings, because you're going to at some point break a string or you're going to need to change them. So a lot of my students ask, how, when do I change my strings? And a good kind of measure is like if you're playing a minimum of three to five times a week, you should probably change them at least every couple of months at the very least. The strings will last a lot longer than that, but what happens is the strings start to lose their tonal quality and they start to sound dull and that they can be more prone to breakage. Even if you're not playing much, old strings just, uh, they just don't sound good and the tension of them starts to get really tight and you lose some of that flexibility which will make the guitar more difficult to play. So if you can, try to change them, try to be on a regimen of changing them every couple of months at the very least. If you're playing a lot, then it may be good to change them every month. And I've even known, been known to change my strings every week. Uh, especially if I'm playing quite a bit. Now let's get into how we label some of the um, different parts of the hands and the guitars. So first thing I'm going to go over is the left hand. As you can see there on the screen, we have a sketch of the left hand. We can see where the thumb is, which is designated by the T. Our index finger is one, our middle is two, and our ring finger is three. And last but not least, our little pinky guy is number four. 
And I'm going to use these numbers a lot during the lessons. And it seems kind of simple at first, but there's going to be a lot of numbers I'm going to be throwing out. And it's easy to kind of get confused of which, which one I'm talking about. The next thing is our right hand. And I think to avoid any sort of confusion of the left and the right hand, they designated these with letters as opposed to numbers. So you can see there the right hand thumb is P, the index is I, the middle is M, and the ring finger is A. We don't have a label for the fourth finger because in traditional classical music, they don't use that fourth finger at all. Um, I, I actually use it, especially for a lot of jazz style guitar, and um, I'll show you how, how I use it in some later videos. Now let's get into the strings. Uh, on this chart, we have a graph of what the end of the guitar looks like. What I mean by the end of the guitar, towards these tuners here. And the first thing I want to note is it has a label for what we call the nut. The nut of the guitar is this white thing. Occasionally you'll see that on some charts. So just so you're aware of, that basically means you're at the very end of the guitar. Now, the other labels, it says skinny and heavy. Basically what they're referring to is the thickness of the string. So the smallest string is going to be our skinny string, and the thickest string is the heavy. So now let's get into the individual strings. So the smallest string is going to be labeled as the first string, or one, and it's going to be the pitch E. And if I play that string open, and what an open string means is any string where I play without any fingers on it. So the first string E is going to sound like this. Now a good way to remember this is a small string, small number. The next string over is going to be our second string, or B string. Then we have our third string, or G string. Then we have our fourth string, D string. Fifth string, A. Sixth string, E. Now, we see, we, we know where there's two strings that have the same pitch, which is E. That's why I like to use the numbers. So if I tell a student to play the, the first string, they know exactly which string I'm talking about. If I say, play the E string, they may be confused of which one to play on.